I'm running him down, Jack. And I'm fast for my age. I'm running him down. Hey, Amen. I'm just telling the truth in here. Can I tell the truth in here? Hey, Amen. See, some folk, some folk love the truth. Ooh, pastor, that's why I love you. What is ministry? You just be telling it like it is. Until. Now, nah, see, he always telling it like it is. <laughs> you loved it. You used to love that. AnimateBeliever.com forward slash godly order. Godly. Look at somebody say godly order. Woo! Look at them umbrellas. Woo! I'm going to just let that marinate for a minute. Because it's 2022 and the folk don't believe this no more. So let's just look at it. Let's, let's look. Y'all looking? Just look. Let's just, like the old folks say, let's just study on it. Thank God for my mom and he brought her lovely sister. Good to see y'all here. Amen. Y'all, y'all talking about you. <laughs> Amen. Amen. All right. Godly order. We're going to talk about the order that God has established. It really doesn't matter what men decide to do. God has an order. And it doesn't matter what men decide to do. Only God's order works. And the reason our society goes against God's order is because they know God's order works and they don't want it to work now think about that they're not doing something they think is better you think the junk they put on TV they think is benefiting you they know what that look at somebody say they know what they're doing they know what they're doing they know if they put the, the woman over the man just like they did in slavery they know what that's going to do to the home they know if they take the man out of the home they know what that's going to do so all the TV shows and everything, that the man is always a blithering idiot. They know. They're doing it on purpose because they're trying to destroy God's order. Godly. When we, when we are obedient to God, we will reap his blessings and benefits. Amen? Amen? When you grew up in your home and you did what your father said, did you get blessed? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But when you did something against what he said, you got whooped. That's the curse in the house, whooping. I don't know if y'all still whoop. Do people still whoop now? Yes, Amen. Amen. Hey man, I got so many whoopings. I was, oh, I was a beat up kid. But we are, when we're obedient, we reap his blessings. It's the same with God. When you're doing it God's way, he will bless you. Yes, Amen. Right. Amen. He'll take little and make it into much when you're doing it his way. Deuteronomy 11 and 20. Six, behold, I set before you this day a blessing and a curse. Somebody like, oh, that's the Old Testament. It's the Bible. This is how God felt. God felt like saying this. So I'm going to listen to what he said. He said, I set before you this day a blessing and a curse. And that's all of us. All of us have a blessing and a curse right before us to choose from. We do have choice. He said, a blessing if you obey the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you this day. So if we do it God's way, we will be blessed. Right. Amen. Amen. The church, you know, dropped the ball a little bit. I can't speak for the whole church, but a lot of churches. Because they preach blessing only based on finances. Amen. And not obedience. Yes. Who giving is obedience. See, they just twist everything in the money. Now you got to do it God's way. Amen. Drug dealer coming in here and paying 10%. That ain't going to yield him no blessings. Amen. 
Obedience is worship unto God. Amen. We learned that when Dr. Carter was here, but you already knew that from the story of Isaac uh, being sacrificed. Because Abraham obeyed or was obedient, he called his act of obedience worship. Amen. That's why the Bible said uh, uh, what Jesus said, their, their mouths draw close to me, but their heart is far from me. Meaning they up singing praise and worship, but they ain't thinking about me. Amen. Not no flamboyant sissy. You ain't thinking about the Lord. Not no whoremonger and organist. Hands on all the keys and the women. You ain't thinking about the Lord. So they singing about him. Jesus. But their heart Something about that man. <laughs> Something about that your tongue up. You ain't supposed to even be singing with your tongue. I taught high school level choir for six years and never did I teach to make a certain note you gotta stick your tongue out. The devil taught you how to hit that note. Why they love that boy. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> That's a curse. A curse. Devil got you. You can't even talk right. Swole your tongue up so big. You can't even make words. <laughs> That's a curse. So you can be singing about him, writing songs about him, going to church. Thinking you're thinking about him. But if you're not obedient to him, you won't be blessed by him. Amen. Oh, but I got a good job, so it must have been the Lord. You went to school for four years. You got a degree, don't you? You got to obey to be blessed by him. Somebody can be right next to you, get the exact same job, and do way better in life because they have the blessing of the Lord on them because they're obedient. Y'all making the same money, but their money goes further than yours. Their home is peaceful because God is in the details. I'm preaching. Those that oppose God's commands struggle in this life. That's why they're mad at you. They get mad at you because you're trying to do it God's way. They're struggling, angry, so they fight you. When all they got to do is stop opposing. Why are you mad at me doing it God's way? You're opposing his way, and you're mad at me. Just do, do what I'm doing. Cain? That's all Cain had to do. Do what Abel is doing. God even told him, do, do what your brother's doing. And it'll be all right. Don't oppose him because he's doing what he's supposed to be doing and you're not. So those that oppose God's command struggling is like God does not bless contrariness. Y'all know contrary people? Spiritually, just contrary. Oh, I don't like G. Craig. He talk about the music too much. Well, I send you a video where he don't mention the music at all. Oh, but see in there, he talking about sin too much. But well, what you want him to talk about? <laughs> then if I don't talk about sin, oh, he's seeker sensitive. <laughs> he talk about money too much. 
What? No, he don't talk about money. He should. Okay. <laughs> That's a contrary person. They can't find good in nothing I'm doing. Contrary. Yeah. But God doesn't bless contrary people. You know why God don't bless contrary people? Because the time that they should be talking to God and obeying and stuff, they worried about somebody else. You so worried about me, you missing your blessing. Yeah, because you're contrary. I put a uh, post on Instagram this morning. Uh, I did it a couple of days ago. I, I put it up this morning. I was talking about having art in your heart. And the number one way to find out if you have art against somebody is if you wish something bad to happen to them. If thoughts in your mind come where you're wishing for the big payback, like James Brown say, <laughs> you wishing for just God to get them, do something. You wish, not even God, devil, just whoever, just something bad happened. That means you have art against them. You should never wish bad on anyone. You should wish blessings on whoever it is. I don't care how annoying they are. I don't care what they did to you. You don't wish harm. Because somebody didn't wish harm on you and prayed you into the fold. When you were contrary. Yeah, when you was watching the first Truth Behind Hip Hop. Oh, no, not Jay-Z. Remember them days? <laughs> yeah, so you don't cancel nobody out like that. Deuteronomy 11 and 28. I will give you a curse if ye will not obey the commandments of the Lord your God, but turn aside out of the way which I command you this day to go after other gods which you have not known. Take authority over your own life and do things your way. That's where a curse comes. So you're blessed if you do it the way the manufacturer intended for his product to operate. Or you're cursed if you take it upon yourself to do it your own way. The world keeps promoting people doing it their own way. They want you to do it exactly like you feel like it should be done. Ooh, look at somebody say, don't do that. Oh, don't do that. Don't do it like you feel it should be done. Because sometimes you crazy. Anybody crazy sometimes? Oh, look at them. Somebody just don't. I, I know some of y'all are perfect and got it all together. Sometimes my mind just ain't where it needs to be for me to be making that kind of decision. So I have to consult the Lord and I have to go by what the word says to keep me alive. I got to have God's boundaries or I will do something real ignorant. Yeah. Yeah, they want you reading Crowley's book. Do what thou will, what thou feelest. Oh, no. No, no, no. Do you know what God has asked of you? Not the pastor. Not your mama, not your daddy, not your husband. Do you know what God has asked of you? Do you really know what his will is for you? Do you know? You know some people live 60, 70, 80 years. And can't answer this question. You lived your whole life and you never knew what God's will for you was. You bought the purpose driven life, purpose driven church, purpose driven car, the purpose driven everything, purpose driven. You trying to find your purpose, but you never consulted the manufacturer. <laughs> Only his purpose. Is going to validate you. People live and die without validation. Romans 12 and 2. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye what? Transformed by the renewing of your mind. Everybody stops right there. Woo! They know that part. 
Transformed by the renewing. Touch somebody and say renewing. Renewing. Renewing of your mind and then move on. No, finish it. That you may prove what is that good, acceptable, and perfect what? Not your will. The perfect will of God. So let's go back now that we know this is talking about God's will and not your will. Be not conformed to this world. Meaning, don't fit in. If you fit in, you out of the kingdom. But be ye transformed, changed by the renewing of your what? Mind. How do we get our mind renewed? There's no scientific uh, 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 experiment or even procedure that can renew your mind. No matter what they do, your mind is still there. Yeah. And it's still intact the way it was. Yeah. They can't program it and they're trying. But they can't put it in the computer and say, I'm going to delete everything that happened from age such and such. No, 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 no. Can't do that. There's only one way to renew your mind. And that's the word of God. Yeah. What God's word says can change us. If any man be in Christ, he is a new old things or what? You got to be in Christ, bro. You can't do this. Only the word of God can do this. To make you a new creation. To make old things pass away. And so if we were doing our mind by the word of God, then we can prove what God's will is. What is acceptable and what is good. And what is perfect. Can I keep going? Oh, this is about to get real interesting. What I like Martin Luther King. <laughs> Didn't notice it till it got real big. Men must obey God and follow his plan and not the plan of a woman. Somebody like, where did that come from? Right there. I just read it. Came off the screen what it says let that sink in for a minute men must obey God and follow his plan what the devil wants for every man in here he wants you yoked up with a witch he wants you yoked up with some old Jezebel that won't listen to you that is unteachable and always contrary to keep you in line and in check so she can control the home. Yeah. She'll throw tantrums. She'll jump out of a moving car on the freeway to prove her point. Let me out. I got let me out. She will jump out. Yeah. Injure herself. She'll injure herself to try to make you feel bad. So she can manipulate you into not going against her again. Yeah. Oh, she won't let you live down your past. She will bring your past up until you die. You know, when somebody holds something against you like that, do you know that shortens your life? She's killing you. Yeah, you can't hold that's witchcraft. You can't hold nothing on nobody like that. I'm gonna do this. Oh boy, you better you better act right. I sat in the office with pastors and I'm like, man, your wife is out of control. They're like, I know. I said, Well, what you gonna do? I can't do nothing because man, she got this on me, man. She says she gonna tell the church I'm gonna end up losing. Bro, you don't let nobody do that. That's witchcraft. I said, man, you cutting 20 years, 30 years off your lifespan dealing with a witch in your house. And who does that to another human? And who does that to their own house? That's your house. Earl, you how my voice got guilty. That's your house. Your old house, you got kids in there. And then when they grow up crazy in rebellion, you can't figure out what happened to them. 
You were in rebellion. You brought that spirit in there. I'm preaching. I don't care. Ooh. I don't care. So you got to follow and obey God no matter what she says. And if she don't like it, tough. Tough. Deal with God. Why are you scared of her? God told you. I done met with men in my office, Walter. And I'm like, man, you got to go. You got to go handle this. You got to do this. You got to stand up. That's the wrong decision. She's forced you to make it. Okay, man. Okay, pastor, I'll do it. Then they get up and just walk around my office. I said, no, the door, the door is right there. No, nah, man, I mean, you know, I got to go, you know, I got to go to, it's like, brother, who are you? It's a woman, what, what, you so scared? What? Why are you so scared? You live with her. Three, four days later, I get that text, they don't call me, I get that text. Pastor, we won't be coming back, you know, to the church, you know. I said, oh, man. It's like, what? The, did you tell him what we talked about? You can't be going around scared of a human in your house, somebody you sleep in a bed with. You sleep in a bed with the bride of Frankenstein? But they look for guys who's Mamas beat them down like that. Because most women don't really know how to raise a man. That's not no fault of no woman. It just takes a man. And so in a lot of cases, not all. Now we got hundreds of examples of men in here that overcame what I'm talking about. So, I mean, that's the whole renewing of your mind thing we talked about a little earlier. If any man be in Christ, he's a what? New creatures. I don't care if you was raised by wolves. If you a new creature, you a new creature. Amen. So we don't put limits on what God can do in here. We've seen men fully rehabilitated, taking the lead role of their home and leading their family into the promised land. That happens here. That's what we do. But the one whose wives are like, they can't stay around long. It's foolishness. Yeah, it's witchcraft. Y'all, this has destroyed the church. It wasn't COVID. Men with fortitude stood up to COVID. But the ones who lost their fortitude and it was snatched away, wonder who got it. She got it. Boy, I'll stay on this one paragraph, man, because I done preached myself sweating. Let me go watch my thing. That's good stuff, though. Amen. Amen. Whether married or single, single men. We got any single men in here? They don't want to clap. They're like, tell us the next part you about to say, and then we'll decide whether or not we want to participate. <laughs> That's what you think of Bria. Let us hear the next part. And then we'll, we'll see <laughs> if it's time for us to, you know, be exposed to the congregation that way. You know. <laughs> ah, that's funny. But whether married or single, men are the head of women. And this is the order that God will bless. Amen. So if you're a single man, you out there, you can't be just dating every girl, sleeping with all the girls. Don't you know that Jezebel is controlling you? Setting you up so when you get married, you will not be the head of your home. She starts when you're single. Yeah. Amen. Got you caught up in pornography. 
You'll never find a real woman that way. That's Jezebel. Whether married or single, men are the head of the woman, and this is God's order. 1 Corinthians 11 and 3. But I would have you know that the head of every man. How many men? The head of absolutely. Man, when Jesus was glorified, J. Bryant, folks don't really understand the depths of that. He was glorified to the point that he is the head of every man. Every man. Look at somebody and say, that's some power. Like, you got all power. You the head of every man. You the man. If you the head of every man. I ain't sitting in no Buddhist temple. Buddha ain't the head of every man. I'm not sitting at the nation of Islam. Farrakhan ain't the head of every man. Allah is not the head of every man. I'm serving Jesus. I'm sitting under the head of every man. <laughs> Look at somebody say, I'm in the right place. <laughs> He said, I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ and the head of the woman. The woman, the species. That's all women. The head of all women is the man. Look. That's the fingertip. That's them fingertip claps. Wait a minute, pastor. No, ain't no way to bid it. The head of the woman is the man and the head of Christ is God. This is the order. Look at somebody and say, that's the order. And say, and if you don't like it, find another church. Amen. Some churches don't, they don't go by this. But we go by it because it's in the word. Amen. We love Paul in here. We like Paul's writings. We don't discount him and call him human. Everybody that wrote the Bible was human. God can't hold a human pen, stone tablet. He got men to do it because he wants you to respect the authority that he has given men. Oh, I wish you could read the dumb emails. Sister Dallard, they send me some dumb stuff. I need a whole folder and just mark it spirit of dumb. <laughs> they get this dumb. Because they went against what I was preaching when I was preaching this order. They didn't like it. You know, so some of the women, they didn't like this. So they felt like this was Paul. And so we got to go against, you know, Paul because, you know, Paul was preaching his opinion. Later on, he said a woman shouldn't be teaching me. So I just can't handle that. So I'm going to go, you know, we're going to get in a belief system that's going to help us kind of, you know, get rid of Paul. So they're going to become black Hebrew Israelite. That way, you know, Paul is not as significant. It's about the Old Testament. Then I get the email. He prayed for my family. What happened? I mean, he wanted, he trying to take on another wife. I wonder why. That's in the law, ain't it? You wanted that, right? Ain't that what you, ain't that what you kicked us to the curb for? He won't let me do nothing. He's abusive. He be, he, he got an anger management problem. He telling me what to do. You pray for me, Pastor. Ain't. Lord, forgive me. <laughs> See, Lord, forgive me. <laughs> Y'all pray for me. <laughs> That's tough, though. I Man, we ain't done nothing but try to help you. You went up there and got in that foolishness. Now you trying to get out. I 
the whole felt jumpsuit. Everybody. Yeah. God's way works, man. This is not an insult to women. This is a blessing for women. This, for the women that can do this, they will be blessed. Oh, I said here's some P31. They will be blessed. Amen. No men abusing women and forcing them. That man, no, I ain't not. Look at some of these women. You ain't finna tell these. Boy, you ain't finna bully my wife. You sure ain't gonna bully Stacy. Are you crazy? That ain't happening. I don't care how tough anything he is. Bro, he don't wanna contend with that. That's not how we do things. It's God's order. Women were created by God to be the help meet for men. Some women can't even clap because society has taught them that they should be a boss. They can't clap. They in here, hearing the truth, can't receive it. Because society told them that they're better off being by themselves. Not doing what a man tell them. Women were created by God to be the help meet for men. Boy, I'm walking heavy today. My, my, my shoes is getting heavy. <laughs> there are many things that men need and women help them with. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. God looked at man and said, Adam, you whack. You need some help, bro. So let me get you a help meet. Amen. EX Ministries would just shut down without my woman. I mean, the house shuts down. It gets dark. None of the lights work when she's sick. It's just dark in there. <laughs> yeah, everybody hungry. Like, we just can't feed ourselves. <laughs> but we go <gonna> eat. <laughs> hungry. <laughs> Man. Man. So there are many things that men need and women help them with. But this must not be done through strife, emasculation, or manipulation. Those are the things, that's the way society taught you to do it. Treating the man like he crazy. Disrespect, dishonor, yelling, screaming, jumping in front of, moving vehicles. Calling him sorry. Saying he's nothing. He ain't gonna ever be nothing. Yeah. You don't get blessed for that. Yeah. Striving to be more important than him. Don't you know you make him important? I know pastors, they compete with their wives for the congregation. You acting like that and you have a whole congregation following you? Do you know what happens to the congregation when your home is in that kind of disarray and confusion? Do you know what happens to your daughters in the home? Y'all, hey. Hey, how many seats we got? Oh, what, what are we doing? Are we you know. Anybody preaching for members? I'm preaching the truth. Amen. And my job is to keep witches out of here. Witches can't. This right here? Oh, you, you can't hear them in the spirit, but I can. Oh, I melted. In the spirit. Gone and melt, witch. Smelt. Get out of here. 
and take your man with you. Amen. You know, I went on vacation. I, hey, you know, I'm refreshed. Oh, I go a long time. I got all kind of energy. But it's the truth. There are many things that a woman can do, but you just can't be manipulating, emasculating him in front of people. You calling him out in front of people. Genesis 2 and 18. And the Lord God said, It is not good that the man should be alone, so I will make him a witch. Somebody to box with. <laughs> Somebody to argue and demean him. Put him down. No, I will make a help meet. He needs Help. Yeah. Man. Yeah. I'll turn around so you can leave without me seeing you. And see, the Lord was dealing with me about this. It don't always look like this. You know, this is the image that's happening, but it don't look like this. When she's doing it. They get real manipulative. And control the man's mind. So he can't think for himself. So when God tells him to do something. God has the plan for the home. He's not giving it to you. He's going to give it to the head of the home. And when he gives that plan to the man. He wants it executed his way. He's going to put. The word around the man, he's going to bring him around stronger men because iron sharpens iron. He's going to put him in the right place to get this accomplished. But the woman is going to get him right out of there. Can I keep preaching in here? God does not use men that cannot stand up for him. Especially when it comes to the authority he has given men. You can't stand up to a woman, God can't use you. You can't stand up to the woman in your house, God can't use you. And when I say stand up, I ain't talking about bullying and fighting and bossing her around all that because all that's fake fortitude. I don't know loud talking and all, you got to do all that. You don't, she ain't listening to you. She should just respect you and want to help you. Not help you be what she wants you to be, but help you be what God wants you to be. Am I preaching to say, I know I, I feel like it. you're getting blessed, Samaya. See the little cherry getting blessed. Revelations 2 and 20. Notwithstanding, I have a few things against you, against your church. Because you suffering that woman Jezebel that's calling herself a what? Prophet. That's like a hashtag now. They all call themselves that. To teach and to seduce my servants to commit what? Fornication. This isn't talking about sexual. This is spiritual fornication with the world. That's what Jezebel does. She comes into the church to bring the world into the church. And turn the church or make the church worldly. She want them singing her love songs during the pastor's anniversary. Inviting the R&B artists into the church. A woman does that. Let the step team step to, yeah. Yeah. Going to turn the church worldly. Mm-hmm. Ain't nothing wrong with that. That's just cute. Yeah. Commit fornication and eat things sacrificed unto idols. Bringing the mixture of the world into the church. Jesus said, who was judging the church, said, I got a problem with this. Because you're letting it happen. Suffering the world. You're letting it happen. You can't stand up to Jezebel. 
who I'm preaching in here. <clears throat> that, yeah, that's, see, that's why we got a generation of this. All the young girls now in the witchcraft. Dressing sexy and nasty and provocative. Luring men with their sexuality. Where did all that come from? That came from the women wanting to preach to the men. See, if the women preach to the men, they're neglecting what God told them to do when he said, let the older women teach the younger women. It's the job of the women to teach the younger women how to not worship the devil, how to dress, how to look proper, how to be a lady. Amen. Every now and then you need some high heels or something. Spray on some cologne. As a woman, but you need a woman to teach you that. Be a girl. So you don't turn into a witch. But no, the women, they want to be up on the in the pulpit. <laughs> God. <laughs> the Lord. <laughs> a woman. A woman. A woman. The, a woman. Hey, God. Yeah. Boy, if I was a man and my wife was over there doing that, I would throw up. Come get the bring out the purge bucket. I have to vomit. Cause her voice is raspy and deep. I don't want no woman sounding like Satchmo. You say I'm not gonna sing it. What a wonderful word. I'm not going to sing it. I don't need Louie in the band with me. Louie, really? I love you. I love you. She got the mic in the bed. Why is the mic in the bed still plugged up? It's still on. I spent too much time with Dr. Carter this week. That's what it is. We gonna blame him. Some foolishness. That's not what a woman's supposed to be doing. You ought to felt comfortable when she was up there doing it. Laying hands on, bringing men down and laying hands on men? A woman? The devil loves to use women. To persuade and coerce men into operating emotionally and not logically or through God's logos. Because a woman is going to act emotional because you were created to do that. That balances a man out, but it shouldn't change the man. Shouldn't change him into you. Y'all shouldn't be arguing over the, the vanity mirror. <laughs> uh, man, check yourself. If it take you at just as long to get ready as your wife, <laughs> bruh, I need to see your man card. I need to see how many punches and stamps you got on it. It shouldn't take you that long. It really shouldn't take you that long. Let me teach you, young brother, something. Don't you be in the mirror that long. It's okay. That's okay. It's, it, it's okay. Yeah. First Kings 21 and 25. But there was none like under Ahab. See, people think men have a Jezebel spirit. They really don't. They enable Jezebel because they have an Ahab spirit. And the Bible said Ahab is the jivest man that has ever lived. He's, he's that kind of jive. The only one, the, you know who the second runner up was? His father, Omri. That's the runner up. Because before Ahab, the Bible said Omri was the jivest and did evil in the sight of God. Then he had a son and it made it worse because what the adults do in moderation. Yeah, so the Bible says Ahab is famous for being jive. And that's the spirit that gets on men that enable 
Jezebel. Jezebel looks for that spirit in men when she wants to get married. She wants a man she knows is going to let her do whatever she wants to do. So she targets them. She targets your daddy issues, bruh. Your daddy, your fatherlessness. She targets that. She needs an Ahab. See, we think women are large, in charge, and all that, but that's not how it works in the spirit realm. In the spirit realm, it's done. It's what God said. So, in order for a witch to work, they have to use male influence. Because God spoke it and set it up that way. Am I preaching in here? Somebody ready for me to turn the page? Turn the page, Pastor. That's enough. No, it's not. It's not enough. You need to hear this. The devil loves to use women to persuade and coerce men into operating emotionally and not logically through God's logos. But there was none like Ahab which did sell. Sold out. He sold out. Who he sell out to? Keep reading. Sold himself to work wickedness in the sight of the Lord whom who? Jezebel, his wife, did what? Manipulated him. Used him. He should have never married her. Jezebel comes from Baal. She's a daughter of Baal. Why you bring her in the church? Or in God's order? In his kingdom? She just looked it so good. Single man, boy, you've been warned today. I promise you. Yeah. Amen. There's some text messages and phone numbers you got to delete now. Counts you got to block. Look at the women. He just on the women today. Yes. I'll be on the men soon, but today it's the women. Both of y'all in here. It was the woman that was deceived in the garden, according to the Bible. And this plague has caused many men to fall into the trap and lure of female authority. 1 Timothy 2 and 14. And Adam was not deceived. <laughs> oh, she going down for the count on that one. Adam was not deceived. <laughs> Bubble, bubble doll, toil and trouble. <laughs> Down for the count. Adam was not deceived. But the woman being deceived was in the... The baby. Boy, the babies in here be testifying. God did not design authority to be used this way. Why would you want your own house looking like that? Your house looking like that because you did it. Amen. Told your husband that. Talked about. Talked about. Hear you. You had that. Leave it. Leave it. Leave it. Leave it. House on fire. You know, told house on fire. Can't get the kids out in time. They messed all of their lives up. All their families up. God did not design authority to be used this way. Many churches and homes have lost God's power and purpose because they have reversed his order. 1 Timothy 2 and 12. But I suffer not a woman to teach. Nor to assert authority over who? The man. So when it comes to the man teaching in this or any fellowship of God, she should be sitting and in silence. No competition. Chill. Now, when it comes to teaching women, there's nobody better. My wife is very good at it. And I don't want to do that. So it's great. But when it comes to men, what does a woman have to get up and teach men? What do you have to say? Here's the thing to get me. 
They just laboring all night. Husband coming, what you doing? Oh, I'm getting the word from the Lord. So he he can't get it. Word for the church, pastor can't get it. Woman got to have it. Or she has something different than the head has. That's too many heads. That's a freak. You know, every now and then, elder, we got to do this. Because when the church starts filling up and wallet of them, hey, Somebody's in the wrong place. I need to let you know how it works in here. And we've been doing this going on 12 years. Why would we? <laughs> Summary! Let me just end it. What time is it? No, this summer is just as bad. Amen. society's desire is to reverse God's order completely why would the devil do anything different the symbol of the devil is half man half woman goat baphomet pervert God's order got an article the other day from the Christian post a Christian homosexual says that the LGBT is going to completely destroy the church. That's a lie because the Bible said they can't. But the LGBT, that's what they say. That's what they believe. They believe that if they can pervert the order of the leadership of the church, they can destroy the church. So they come in to pitch the woman over the man. See, a strong man is not going to have flamboyant homosexuality in leadership. Can I tell the truth in here, D? Not going to happen. You're not going to come and see them singing and slanging, waiting on the next praise break with the short suit coat you got in the little boy section. But ain't gonna be none of that. Hey, sister, hey, sister, so and so. How you doing, sister? How you doing? We don't do that. We're not doing that. But they know. They know. They know who will allow it. You know who will allow it? First lady. Because there's a whole bunch of women in there whose sons are like that. And they can't be offended. So they get behind the first lady. She'll have him up there singing. Oh, he's so cute. Look at him praise dancing. He's slanging everywhere. Look at him. He's so cute. Look at him. No, oh, y'all just let him. You know the Lord. No. No. Yeah. Well, I had a whore-monging organist. Sangers. Just have all that going. And she's going she's gonna to allow it. Because she's softer and she's emotional. That's why she shouldn't be in that position. There's nothing wrong with her being emotional. There's nothing wrong with her feeling what the other ladies are feeling about their children. That's her sensitivity. That works in a whole lot of scenarios. But when it comes to the leadership of the church, a man has, that's who God sanctioned because he's going to put a stop to it. Stop me when I'm lying. But the devil wants to raise up effeminate men that desire female leadership. He uses women with the Jezebel spirit to find men that are void of male authority so they can control them, manipulate them, and change God's plan for them and their homes. These women, now listen to this, whether in a marriage or outside of a marriage, will cause a man to disobey God's order and submit to their authority. Single women do this. When a man cannot stand up for God to a woman, he folds for life. 
You're done, bro. You're done. He will never be anything in God's kingdom because he cannot obey God in the face of opposition. This is what is plaguing our churches and homes. Men cannot forsake the lure and command of a woman in order to follow the plan that God has for him. Can I keep going? The biggest problem in our churches and communities is the lack of strong male leadership. They call it toxic masculinity now. Males are canceled out so that the strong man can be bound. How else do you spoil a man's goods unless you first what? Devil knows that. This causes the goods of the house to be spoiled. Even single women and single mothers. Y'all better listen to G. Craig right here. Single women and single mothers' homes can operate under a curse just because the woman hates male leadership. So I know you're not married. I know you, don't, you believe you don't have a covering or whatever. God is your covering. You still got to act right. You still got to respect his order. Be a woman until the man comes. Woo! We must be obedient to God and his order for us in the earth in order to truly be blessed. Don't you want to be blessed by him? If we fail to honor his order, we are left to fend for ourselves and operate without his blessings on our lives. God will only bless his order and those that obey it will be what? Favored by him. Ooh, I'm not done. Keep my foot on that neck. <laughs> Revelations 2 and 20. You know, because we've been having a lot of little rebellion situations popping up here lately. Just a little, you know, little rebellion, a little bit here, a little bit there. Well, no, you can't, you can't sit over there and sit. Why can't I sit? That's rebellion. The Bible says that's as the spirit of what? Witchcraft. A little bitty witch, but it's witchcraft. Uh, could you put on something a little more appropriate for the service? Uh, why does that matter? Why can't I wear what I want? Rebellion. Witchcraft. Trying to just, you're trying to set up camp. We're not going to let you. We own you. Amen. If it go all the way back down to the core group, we shrink it back down. Man, I don't care. I'm trying to see Jesus and ain't no witch stopping that. Amen. Revelation 2 and 21. You know, and let me say this. I got time. <laughs> you like the whole preacher, you know, it just go longer. In the book of Acts. Get your Bible. <laughs> Started all over. My daddy used to do that. <laughs> Started all over, but why don't you? But yeah, but I just want you to understand we ain't gonna have, you're not gonna respect me and disrespect my wife and think I'm gonna like you. Like, you, we're one. We, we're in this together. So anything you're doing, if anything you're doing or saying, it's disrespecting our relationship in any kind of way. I have a problem with you. Amen. Revelation 2 and 21. And I gave her a space to repent of her fornication and she repented not. Now listen to this. Please hear what I'm saying. Because... Almost all women have some form of Jezebel instilled in them by our society. Okay? You got to fight this thing. But listen to this. After that, which did all of that to the church, all of that to the leadership, led the church to the fornication and all that, God's love, what did he do? He said, I, st I gave her a what? Because somebody said, all you got to do is repent. All you got to do is repent. He said, I gave her a space to repent, but she repented not.
not. I would like to think that you're in here so you can repent and change the narrative of your life. You saw it done another way and that way was horrible and that's why you ended up the way you ended up. So you ought to be trying to take that space that God has given us all and do what? Repent. He said, but she won't repent, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to cast her into a bed of sickness. Her body's going to turn on her. She's going to be sickly. And them that commit adultery with her into great tribulation. So all the ones following her and listening to her, you're going to have some troubles. Your life's going to get hard. You ever notice how hard a witch's life is? Yeah. These little young girls come online and, yeah, see, yeah, this is the new crystal I have. It's the blue uh, pot of crystal. <laughs> and you take this crystal and when your boyfriend is acting up, you just drop a little piece of it in his afro. And it'll change the way he acting. And that's what you do. And they'll do all of that, smile and looking happy. They turn that camera off, all hell breaks loose. They hate their life. They hate the way they're living. They hate what has happened to them. They hate everybody. You're not a witch and love people. You're a witch because you hate everybody. That's what witchcraft is. Why do they hate everybody? Because they followed a Jezebel and they committed spiritual adultery with her. And cause their life to be full of tribulation. But he says it again. This is Jesus. He said, I'm going to cast out a sick man. And then all those that commit adultery with her in the great tribulation. Except they do what? Repent. Look at somebody say, all you got to do is repent. He said, and I will kill her children with death. Those that she produced. You know how many churches came out of this? How many denominations were overtaken by this? Kill them with death. And all the churches shall know that I am he who searcheth the reins and hearts. And I will give unto every one of you according to your works. Oh, here's the good part. He said, but I say unto you, I, but unto you I say, and unto the rest in Thyatira, as many as have not this doctrine. You know, the ones that still believe the man is the head of the woman, as Christ is the head of the church. Christ is the head of every man. Those that have this doctrine, that don't have the Jezebel doctrine. He said, many as don't have that doctrine and which have not known the depths of Satan. Meaning that you did not allow this to happen in your church. He said, as they speak, I will put upon you none of the what? Burden. Burden. You mean you're going to make our way lighter, Lord? I'm going to make your way lighter because you're doing it the right way and the right way yields better results. <laughs> Lift that burden up. But that which ye have already hold fast till I come. And he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end, to him will I give power over the nations. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron. As the vessels of a potter shall they be broken to shivers. Even as I received of my father. I'm going to elevate you. Because you stood for me. And I will give him the morning star. Meaning himself. Jesus. He that hath an ear. Let him hear. What the spirit does what? Saith unto the churches. Everyone stand to your feet. Oh boy. Had to be said. Had to be said. We're a little smarter now in 2022. Some things we let go back in 2012, 2013, whenever it was. We're a little smarter now. Amen. And we just want to do things right. 
We want the right environment. We want the word of God to go forth without compromise. And we want the order of the home on display. Amen. Amen. That's what we want our children to see. That's what we are. That's what we signed up for. That's what we want ABC to be. Amen. Amen. Come on now. If you're struggling with this order, not struggling with it, but you just want to make sure the order, you dead of the Jezebel spirit, the Ahab spirit, you need God to just, you just want to make sure, God to break it off of you. Come on up. Just come on up. I'm going to stand in this hour the right way. I want this order in my home. I want this order for my children. I don't want to be barking and you don't tell me what to do. Who you think you are? And I, God, take all of that out of my mouth. And you're going to be looking at your wife with contempt like you ready to hit her. We're not doing that. We need our homes in order so our children can benefit from it. You know the children benefit? They grow up and see the order. Guess what they want for their homes? Order. They want order. They want what they see. Just come on up. I need the order in my home. No manipulation. When God speaks to that man in that home, you let God speak to him. You follow what God is telling him. Oh, gosh, y'all don't understand how important that is. I know sometimes my wife thought I was a blithering idiot, but she followed what I said because she knew if she's praying and I'm listening to God, I'm going to eventually get it right. That was her hope. Amen. So she just kept confidence. Ain't never went against no plan. Never went against nothing I said. I felt God wanted us to do nothing. She's still here. 30 years. She's here. Ain't always been easy. But she's here. And she'll go anywhere with me. Am I telling the truth? But God gave her that. That's a gift she has. So don't come in here and try to change her so you can be a witch. It's not going to happen. So understand God wants this order. He wants this order so that you can be blessed. So let's break the curse right now. Everybody bow your heads. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we come against every curse of Jezebel and Ahab. Father God, every spirit that is contrary to your plan. Father God, every spirit that society has induced, that a mother or a father has induced. Father God, that the wrong upbringing may have induced. The wrong example may have induced. Wherever it came from, God, we send it back to wherever it came from in the name of Jesus. Father God, these your people, we want your order, God. We want what is right in your eyes. God, we want what is perfect. We want your perfect will in our lives, God. So forgive us, God. Forgive us for being contrary. Forgive us for being Ahabs or Jezebel. Forgive us for allowing those spirits to operate through us, Father God. Forgive us for being even seduced into that by the world, seduced into that by a female, by a male. Forgive us, Father God, for even listening to that voice that set out to destroy us and your plan for us. Father, we rebuke it right now in the name of Jesus. We rebuke it from our families. We rebuke it right now in the name of Jesus from our relationships. And God, most important, we rebuke it from our children right now in the name of Jesus. We cast it away from our seed, from our offspring, that they won't be subject to it. Father God, we cancel the curse of the enemy right now. Father God, we cancel every word curse. Father God, every witchcraft spell. Father God, every incantation. Father God, everything that was done to us that goes against your plan. Every avenue that the enemy... God, we come against incubus and succubus, all night spirits that have come to cause influence in our lives. Father, we're speaking against these things right now because we know that you have the power to defeat them. So let it be defeated in our lives, God. So that we can be that glorious church for you. So our homes can glorify you. 
so our relationships can glorify you. Father God, so our children can grow up and glorify you in the name of Jesus. And we cancel every assignment of the enemy right now. Every assignment that the devil has in every home. Every assignment that he's using against women and men in this fellowship. Every assignment, we cancel it right now by the power of the Holy Ghost. God, fill our homes with your beautiful fruit. Give us more love, more peace, more joy, more long-suffering, more goodness, more meekness, more temperance. Father God, give us more faith. Give us your precious gifts so that our homes can glorify you and our lives can glorify you. I speak even to every single person in here. Father God, protect every single woman in here from the spirit of Jezebel. Father God, from the spirit that comes to even attack their reproductive systems. Father God, we come against those spirits right now for the spirit to come to attack their relationships, to cause them to not even be seen by the man that should marry them, Father God, or those, Father God, that are struggling to keep relationships. We come against every spirit and every spell. For me and God, we come against the spirit of gamophobia, the fear of marriage, the fear of a union, Father God. We come against them. Men that will shack and live with women for years and years. We come against that right now. That things will be done your way, Father God. No matter how they were raised, no matter what they saw, we pray for your perfect will to be shown through this fellowship, through this body, through these believers. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And we thank you. And God, wait before you clap. God, we cancel every word that Jezebel has spoken. Even against this fellowship. Even against this body of believers. We come against every word. The word that causes barrenness in those that are trying to multiply. The word that causes confusion in relationships. Causes divorce. The word, Father God, that causes doubt. We come against every word of Jezebel and all the men that she's operating through. We cancel their words. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And we thank you, Lord. We thank you for deliverance right now. Come on and give God praise. Thank you for deliverance. Thank you for freedom. Thank you, Father God, for making us new. Thank you, Father God, for us being new creations. Thank you, Father God, for altering our behavioral patterns. Thank you for forgiving us when we repented. And we'll give you the praise, glory, and honor, Lord. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Come on and give him praise one more time. Hallelujah. 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 Now come on and put your arms around somebody. And tell them God's order is with me. And as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 You may be seated or you may go to your seats. Hallelujah. For God's order, he wants to bless you, but he only blesses his order. So get in his order and do it his way. His way is the only way. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.